guys, so today I'm going to go a little bit more into VMware ESXi tricks. So these are some tricks I like to use when I'm creating and working with virtualization. They just make my life a little bit easier, so I like to have easy access to my ISOs, I like to be able to duplicate my VMDK file, and I would like to edit my VMX file and why I would want to edit this file. I'll explain it all right now if you just keep watching. If you go over to your console, we're going to press F2 for configuration. Now we're going to type in our root password we set during the installation of our ESXi server. This will bring us to our configuration menu. If you hit the down arrow, we could go down to troubleshooting options. There's a few options here that we can enable. ESSI shell, enable SSH, and restarting the agent. We want to specifically enable our SSH so we can get a command prompt into our ESX server. Now if you go ahead and take a look, you can scroll down and hit enter once, it will change it to enabled. Now we're going to hit escape and then we want to be sure we save our configuration. The first trick I'm going to show you is how to get quick access to ISOs during installation. We're going to need a secure copy software. This Win SCP is free to download. The URL will be in the comments. Let's go ahead and download that. We're going to start it up and connect to our ESXi server. I'm going to type in the IP address or the host name. It goes here. We're going to type in root and the root password to gain access to our ESXi file system. Now this will allow us to upload the ISOs that we are interested in installing. This could be either an operating system or a piece of software. Once it's connect, you'll see the file system, a standard Linux file system here. Now if you go specifically under slash vmfs slash volume slash data store one, you're going to make a folder called ISOs. Now this data store is viewable from the ESXi console vSphere. Now once we do that, we're going to double click into there. We're going to drag over our ISO into that folder. It'll take a few minutes to upload, but this will be there for quick access anytime you decide to install that specific operating system. I'm going to go ahead and log into my vSphere client with my root password and it will take us to our interface. When we go to customization and create our first virtual machine here in our interface, we're going to connect our CD DVD drive to the data store and look for that ISO folder and then the ISO file we just uploaded. It will be much quicker to do it this way than accessing your local CD drive on your physical machine because it will have to go over the network as opposed to having the ISO local on the file system of our ESXi server. You will notice immediately how fast it is to do this installation from the ISO. The next trick I'm going to show you is how to duplicate your VMDK file and help you clone virtual machines using this free version of ESXi we're going to need to SSH in to our ESX server. The SSH is a command line interface to our ESX server, which is a basically a stripped down Red Hat operating system. I'm going to go ahead and start up PuTTY. I'm going to type in the IP address of our ESX server and go ahead and hit connect. This will bring us to our login prompt. We're going to type in root, then the root password, and now it's going to bring you us to the command prompt. We're going to CD into our slash B mfs slash volume slash data store. Go ahead and see our ISO folder here, but specifically we're going to go into the Fedora 6 desktop folder. This is the virtual machine I just created using my ISO before. Now I want to go ahead and clone this virtual machine. If we go ahead, we can take a look at some of the files here, our VMX file, where this is where we could change the system MAC address. So be aware that ESX and VMware restrict the range of this MAC address. Now to clone the system, I'm going to go ahead and copy the folder. In all honesty, you don't need the entire folder for this. You really just need the VMDK file. But if you're new to this, just duplicating the entire folder, giving it a brand new name. In this case, we're going to call it Fedora 6 Beta Test. We're going to clone it out. And now we're going to create a new virtual machine. When we create the virtual machine, we want to be sure to select custom configuration. This way it's going to allow us to customize our virtual disk. 
Let's go through the configuration as we normally would, selecting the operating system, the CPU, the memory. Once we get down to select a disk, we're going to select an existing virtual disk. We're going to browse to our data store, go into the folder we duplicated called beta test, and now we're going to select our VMDK file. That's already 16 gigs. It's identical to the one we copied, including exactly all the software we have installed in the original and any configuration, including the host name and IP. We're going to go ahead and finish off our configuration and go ahead and we're going to boot up our duplicated virtual machine. And if you notice, it will be identical. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.